Hello, I'm Linda Ann at Studio ABC. I'm on the design team for Paul USA and I am a video creator. Watch me create three-dimensional art with this wonderful product. You've seen me work on the bottom of these boxes before with uh, G I drink this G2 Gatorade drink all the time and uh, so I get a box about once a month of these and the box is covered with plastic but this is going to I'm going to use this as a form to make the bracelets today and here's some that I made in the past they're already dry so cutting this is a big problem because this is a really heavy plastic cutting with scissors you just can't hardly poke them into this plastic to get it started and it's really hard once you do uh, cutting with a serrated knife gives a jagged edge, so I had to find something else that would work. I kept trying several options. I tried X-Acto knives and just about everything in my studio that had a cutting edge on it, I tried to use it. And finally, I found a tool that works best for me. This is the uh, Versa tool. It's used like on wood burning. I use it to cut stencils. I use it to cut uh, plastic that's not quite as heavy as this plastic. It actually has a, a blade in it that looks very much like an X-Acto knife blade. And you attach it by screwing it onto the end of the tool before you plug it in to heat it up. There's several different attachments that come with it, but I'm going to show you the one that I used. Here it is. Looks just like an X-Acto knife. But when that's heated up, I can drag that, uh, and it has to be very hot. I have to wait until it's very hot. I can drag it through the bottle and through that plastic and get a nice even cut with that. I'm being careful not to cut my fingers with the blade as I twist this on to the end of this tool. Now I'm going to plug it in. And as I said, I have to wait for it to get pretty hot before because just trying to get it into the bottle before it's hot is not going to do a bit of good. So that's how I cut my rings, but I'm also going to show you how to use the bottle without cutting it. I'm going to begin with this gray popper paw. Uh, I think it'll make a good base for the bracelets because I'm going to paint them anyway. I don't care if the color of the fabric, I don't care what color it turns out. On a brand new container of Paul Ver Paul, you'll need to remove this little plastic tab on the side. Just pop it off, and then the entire uh, lid should be able to lift off easily. I've already shaken this particular container, but you see nothing's really mixed up, so it was new and it didn't have room enough to shake up, and I really think that it's best to stir it anyway, because there's a lot of thickness in the bottom. So I'm using this uh, old paintbrush handle, and I'm going to stir it thoroughly. Look at how thick it is down at the bottom. As long as that's not mixed up together, it's not ready to use. I'll fast forward this part when I get to editing, and you'll see how the color changes and how the uh, consistency of the product changes. So now we've changed to a better consistency and a darker color, and I'm going to pour some into a little cup, cover the remaining product to prevent it from drying out. It doesn't dry fast, you have some working time, but it's just a precaution to help your product last a long time. Wipe off the excess on the side, and then be sure to press down the top nice and secure so that it completely seals. I'll begin working on the bottom of this cardboard box that is completely sealed with a piece of plastic. And uh, I'll use a big brush here, like a paint brush that you paint walls with. And I'll use it to put the Pover Paul onto the fabric. Just laying it down right on top of the stuff that spilled, using it, and then brushing it into the fabric, making sure that it completely penetrates this fabric. I'd like to stress that this is my preferred way of putting the uh, Pover Paul onto the fabric. But you could dip it and squeeze it out and use your finger, run it between fingers. Whatever works for you best is what you should do. This is kind of the way I got started, and I just like it best. I'll go ahead and prepare more than one piece because I like for that first piece to get just a little bit tacky. Just let it dry a little bit, 
and it sticks together better when you start working with it. it my preference again that may not be the way everybody does it but I'm going to prepare several little pieces first. When you pick up these prepped pieces to go around the rings that you cut from your bottle you're going to find that they try to fold up on you and sometimes I work with that and get that out and sometimes I just let it be. I just use it like it is. So if it starts folding up just work with it. Just keep going kind of like I do in all the rest of my art like when I'm painting or something. Just continue to, to wrap, continue to, to go around it and it can be thick and thin layers. It doesn't really matter because the plastic that's on the inside is going to give structure to your bracelet so it's not like you're depending upon a, a real thick layer of the pauper pole to give the structure here. I don't know if you noticed it or not but this bottle was not completely smooth. It has um, different relief areas in it and I like that because it makes the texture of the bracelet a little bit different. My main precaution to you on this method of making a bracelet is to try to make the inside of it as smooth as you can. That's just going to come from uh, once you wrap it, smoothing it down with your fingers, maybe putting a little bit of pauper paw on your fingers, on your glove, and then smoothing the inside a little bit because when this dries it gets very, very hard and you don't want an abrasive area against your skin. I found that out with the first uh, bracelets that I tried with Paul for Paul and nearer the end of the video I'll show you what happened. My plastic bottle ring is just about covered now but I'm going to go ahead and just use up the tail end of this fabric, finish it up and then when I do finish I just pop this on the top of a G2 bottle or a, any kind of plastic bottle and let it dry because the Paul for Paul does not stick to the plastic. I considered that when I started doing that around these bottle rings that are plastic and but the puffer pole will give it structure and the plastic ring inside will give it structure. So it's not that uh, I really have to have it stick to this because the puffer pole is going to stick to itself. So I found that just popping them on top of an uh, old plastic bottle is an easy way to dry them. You could uh, put them on any plastic surface, it doesn't matter. I just didn't want any uh, puddles of the pauper paw forming because later I'll be sanding those off if I have anything that uh, is abrasive or, or just doesn't look appealing. So let's move along to my second method of making bracelets and I just uh, put some pauper paw on some fabric and I'm kind of folding in the edges now because I'd like for my edges to be somewhat smooth on this. It didn't matter on the last one, but on this one it's a different story because I'm going to wrap this around the bottle and I'll just wrap it on top of each other until I form a ring. Then I'll set this up to dry and once it's dry I'll cut that bottle out of the inside and actually it doesn't have, even have to be completely dry when you do that because once you cut the bottle out on the inside you need to uh, give it some more drying time because that area that's up against the bottle needs to dry out and air out. Just smooth it down as much as possible and uh, you see little areas that are sticking out just smooth them down with some pauper paw and the inside of this bracelet you won't have to worry about because it's against a smooth surface it's going to be smooth when you pop it off the bottle. The first bracelet that I wrapped around the bottle was kind of a muslin fabric, some kind of cotton fabric. I use a lot of scrap um, old fabrics from old clothing that people are going to toss. I go to a clothing exchange sometimes and sometimes they want to toss out things that are a little bit dingy or are very worn and those are my favorite pieces to work with. But this green fabric that you're seeing that I'm using today, you've probably seen it before on other Paul for Paul uh, pro projects that I've done because I bought this as a scarf at a thrift store for a quarter. The same as the last bracelet, I'm just pulling it around the bottle and smoothing some areas with a little extra Paul for Paul on my glove. 
it's not a pretty color now. Everything looks like such a mess, but this is going to be so pretty when I paint it and finish it. When it's dry, you'll feel a little resistance from it sticking to the bottle, but just continue to pop it up. It's going to be fine. And cut away the inside of the bottle if you need to. And it'll pop right away from the plastic. Here's the bracelet that I told you that I would tell you something about later. I really like the looks of it. I made it for myself, but the problem is I used lace on it, and when that lace got hard on the inside, it is so scratchy and irritable to my skin that I'm going to have to cover it with something like maybe a layer of, of thin felt or something to make it more comfortable. It just didn't work out. So... Beware, or caution of that. Here's another one I made for myself, which I absolutely love, but I wrapped that lace to the inside, so it has the very same problem. I'm going to have to do something to it to make it more comfortable, but I'm definitely going to rework it because I love it so much. Okay, I made several different bracelets, and they're all dry now, ready to be embellished. One of the ways I like to embellish them is with beads, or in this case, pearls. These aren't expensive pearls. But they're real pearls, and they give a nice look to the finished piece. Look at that. That would be nice, depending on what colors I use. I also have these uh, aqua-colored ones down here, and that would look really nice. It's just up to you how you decide to decorate it. There are countless ways to embellish these. But I just can't resist painting them with vivid ultra-metallics. If you take a look at the backdrop paper that I've been using as a palette, you'll see how metallic they are. And that's what I'm going to go for on the bracelet. Using that gray pauper pole on that green fabric uh, caused me to end up with a mossy forest dusty green. I don't know how else to describe it. I think it's uh, maybe a little bit like olive drab, but it's a nice base for some really rich colors now. I plan to explore a lot more jewelry possibilities with this. There's no end to the shapes and designs you can get with Pauper Paul and uh, A Marriage Made in Heaven is Pauper Paul with vivid ultra metallics because it turns it into something that looks like metal and even I think this has almost a wood grain look to it all of the texture on it, but it still looks like metal when I'm finished. I love these products together. I'm a firm believer that the people that tell you not to mix the colors across from each other on the color wheel just haven't tried metallic colors because these look wonderful together. These colors are way too metallic to turn into mud. So I'm going to edit this to speed up uh, and let you watch the paint do its magic.